everyone. Before I jump into sharing some of my thoughts around um, some further reflection on Acts 1 this morning, I wanted to invite you to watch a video that I found that is really interesting and, and powerful uh, that shares the, the sh uh, it sort of shows the expansion of the church from the beginning of it um, that we read about in Acts all the way up to pretty much the modern day. I, I was really um, moved by it, just kind of watching the ebbs and flows of how Christianity and the church continue to impact the world around it. Um, so I, wanna, I want you to take a look at this video real quick. If you watched as the church expanded and Christianity's gospel message um, reached into the world from its humble beginnings in the Middle East, I think what's interesting is you can pinpoint some of the times throughout history where the church was really pushed back upon and yet it bounced back. And I think that's so powerful, but it only happened because of those who stepped into that role of witness fully as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now I'm not saying or suggesting that we all need to go out into foreign countries and 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 primarily focus on missionary work. I don't think we're all called to that. I don't think that's what scripture um, claims. However, one of the neat things that I, I love that was introduced to me as, um, as I was growing in my role as a pastor is this, this focus in on what Jesus says in Acts 1. And listen specifically to what he says in, uh, in verse 8. He says, you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I think one of the things we forget and neglect oftentimes is, is how we become witnesses in all sorts of different places and, and why it's so important, uh, given that map video we just watched, why we do all that we can in every place we are to witness to our faith, to witness to the power of the gospel in our lives in, in our own unique ways. You know, behind me there's this map, and, and, and if you ask me any time, I will, I will stand by this statement, I will never be a geography teacher. <laughs> one of the reasons I actually didn't become a meteorologist like I originally planned was because I was terrible at geography. But this map behind me is one that you can, you can take a look at sometime if you ever come into the church building if you want. But, but what it reveals is um, some of the places where the, the, the gospel is either um, offensive to the point of being monitored um, or restricted or even countries where its um, leadership is, is hostile toward the, the, the life-transforming message of the gospel. It's amazing how many countries are colored on this map to me. When, when I was looking at it. Um, but that's why it's so important we recognize what Jesus is saying in Acts chapter 1, verse 8 there. You know, we can think of Jerusalem as being our, our local context. For, for many of us, that's Greencastle, maybe Mercersburg, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Hagerstown. You know, those are, are sort of our, our local communities that we, we know very well. It's home to us. And then we can think even a little further and expand that as we think about Judea and we think, well, that's sort of our, our maybe our county or, or maybe even our state, but it, it's still an area that overall we're relatively familiar with. Maybe, maybe there's some areas we're not as familiar with, maybe there's some new stuff we can experience, but those are areas of our Judea. Now, one of the things you might be thinking, okay, well then Samaria probably means either, either the, you know, like the country, um, but act actually, I think there's even a deeper meaning here. Because if you remember, Samaria was the area that was sort of racially uh, different 
um, to those who consider themselves pure as Jews in the day of Jesus. Samaria is really less about a geographical location and more about the area of people that are different from us, that we might think of as inferior, even unintentionally. I, I, I think we all have some biases. Maybe we need to examine in that. Um, maybe it's political divides. Maybe it is racial divides. Maybe it's age divides. Maybe there's something else that we look at a certain group of people and think, whether intentionally or not, that we are better than them. Jesus is saying those people need the gospel too. They are just as worthy of God's love. John 3.16 already proved that. God loved the whole world, not a specific group of people. I think that's important we recognize and ask ourselves, what's our Samaria? What are the areas we need to consider maybe living out the gospel a little more effectively in our lives because we've uninten- you know, maybe even unintentionally thought lower of someone? And then the ends of the earth. That one's pretty obvious though. Everywhere we go, we should be witnesses. One of the things I want to invite you to do, this, um, this map behind me comes from a, a website called um, persecution.com or icommittopray.com. They're, they're both connected as a ministry. And I was just doing a little uh, research on them this morning before I was preparing to uh, share this word with you. And, and what I found amazing is um, how little this map has changed. How little um, work has been accomplished so far in overcoming some of the hostile or restricted areas um, that are pushing back against the good news. I invite you to come in if you are interested in taking a look at this. I, I even invite you to go a step further. I invite you to come in. There's already some names from, from probably some years ago, maybe on here, um, that committed to pray for some countries, the people of those, those areas. I want to invite you to come in and take a look at this map and pick a country, pick an, pick an area or, or, or maybe somewhere that you're, you're uh, connected to in some, some different way and pray for those people. Do some investigating. What is going on in these countries? What is happening that is preventing the gospel from being proclaimed in some of those areas? Or at least what is causing some of the, the hiccups that the church is experiencing? Because the people who are being persecuted are the ones being faithful to the gospel. And we want to encourage and uplift them and support them through our prayers. But not only that, knowing what is happening and how maybe we could even get involved in being a part of serving God's kingdom over there as well. We're going to continue looking at Acts. We're going to continue seeing how this type of thing is, is not anything new to our, our Christian experience at some level. You know, here in this country, we, we generally experience pretty low levels of persecution, if any at all, if we're being honest. And that makes us sort of comfortable. We sort of get into this bubble. I think it's important we ask ourselves to get out of that bubble, to look beyond ourselves, look beyond our, 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 our Jerusalem into our Judeas and Samarias and even the ends of the earth. Because the kingdom of God is not reserved to our neck of the woods, but it's a global movement, an entire cosmological movement that God is enacting through his witnesses. And we're a part of that. So let's do our part. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.